Hello everyone, welcome back to our scenes. So in today's video, we will be talking about the second chapter of 8th standard syllabus that is microorganisms, friends and foe. So this video is going to be the part 1. Let's have a quick look at the topics that we are going to go through in this video. The very first topic, introduction to microorganisms. Then, where do microorganisms live? Microorganisms and us. So, under this topic, we are going to talk about only friendly organisms in this particular video. Okay. So, now, let's talk about the introduction to microorganisms. What are microorganisms? Who are microorganisms? Let's just introduce microorganisms to ourselves. So, living organisms, so microorganisms are nothing but they are living organisms which are not visible to our naked eyes. They are called as microorganisms or microbes. So, here living organisms which you cannot see by your naked eye because of its very tiny size, we call such microorganisms or such living organisms as microorganisms, a short form is microbes. So microorganisms are of many types. So they are classified into four major groups, bacteria, fungi, protozoa and algae. Few of these might be familiar to you and you know few of them might be something which you are going through afresh. So now just to give a little more familiarity, if you can remember diseases like dysentery and malaria, dysentery and malaria they are mainly caused by protozoans. So protozoans are nothing but amoeba, euglena, paramecium which you have already studied in your lower classes. Okay, so those organisms they come under the family of protozoa. And since they belong to protozoa, we call them as protozoans. Similarly, typhoid and tuberculosis, the short form is TB for tuberculosis, they are bacterial diseases. They are caused by different forms of bacteria. Now, other than those four families, that is bacteria, fungi, protozoans and algae, we have got one more family of microorganisms, okay, one more classified class of microorganisms which is purposely placed separately okay, and they are nothing but viruses. Why they are placed separately we are going to see. So viruses, they are also microscopic but are different from other microorganisms they behave differently compared to other organisms viruses reproduce only inside the cells of the host organism so now the big question who is a host a host it could be an animal it could be a human being it is basically the organism inside which the virus is the virus has attacked or the virus is living okay so when a virus attacks a person or an animal okay it will start to multiply it will start to reproduce only when it is inside the body of an animal or of a human being or of any uh, you know any host any organism to which it's infecting okay so when it is inside the body then only it is going to multiply if it is outside the body in the open atmosphere it will never multiply it will act as if it is non-living it is not a living organism that is how it is going to act so inside the body of the organism only it will act as if it is a living organism so the common uh, diseases such as cold flu and cuffs they are mainly caused by viruses you might have heard doctors telling you oh it's viral so they will hardly be giving you only either the fever tabs or something to just soothe your cuff there won't be any kind of medicine to kill the particular germ or to kill the microbe. Okay, so that is the case of viruses. Then there are some of the serious diseases which are caused by viruses such as polio, chicken pox and even AIDS. Okay, so such kind of serious diseases are also caused by viruses. Now, as we have already seen the introduction, 
द वेरी बिग क्वेश्चन बग्ज आ माइंड वे डू दिस माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स लिव माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर एवरीवेयर अराउंड अस ओके इट कुड बी द एयर यू ब्रीद इट कुड बी द वॉटर यू ड्रिंक इट कुड बी द फूड यू ईट इट कुड बी द सर्फेस दैट यू टच इट कुड बी वेयर यू लिव वेयर यू सेट everywhere you have microorganisms around you they live in all types of environment ranging from ice cold climate to hot springs and deserts to marshy lands so whatever your area whether it's very cold or whether it's very hot whether it's a desert or whether it's completely full of vegetation it does not matter in every case you will have microorganism around you that is how they are that is where they are some microorganisms grow on other microorgan sorry other organisms while other exist freely there are some of the microorganisms which act as a parasite or which live on which are living in the presence or on different organisms whereas there are some of the microorganisms who exist freely that means they don't need they don't need other host or other organisms around them to exist so they can live freely okay so example fungi fungi is something which grow on dead and decaying matter so when there is a dead and decaying matter then only this fungi will start growing okay it could be your bread you can see bread mould appearing only when your bread has you know it has been there for some days so eventually you are going to see them grow okay before that it never existed so similarly there are so this organism specifically fungi they grow on dead and decaying matter this is an example for the microorganisms which grow on other organisms or in the presence of other in the presence of a particular substrata while well, others they exist freely they don't need they just flow through air they just grow okay they don't need any particular media or any particular organisms to grow next microorganisms and us what is the role of microorganisms in our life that we are going to see microorganisms play a very important role in our lives yes they have a very prominent and very important role in our life some are beneficial while others are harmful and cause diseases so there is always two faces to us the same coin similarly here microorganisms could be beneficial to us but also harmful so we are going to talk about the friendly microorganisms in this video so let's get started with the friendly microorganisms microorganisms are used for various purposes such as preparation of curd bread and cake so all those bakery food that you eat it that fluffiness that sponginess that you get it is all because of the microorganism okay other than that even curd curd milk turns into curd by the action of bacteria if the bacteria is absent your milk will never never turn into curd okay and curd is something we love next they are also used for cleaning the environment now the big question how are they used to clean the environment we are going to talk about that in detail further on okay they are used for scavenging the earth they are used to remove the dead and decaying matter from the earth now in agriculture they are used to increase soil fertility by fixing nitrogen okay so this is a very large topic that we will be talking in the part 3 of this particular chapter okay so how does the microorganisms fix nitrogen in the soil we are going to see and why nitrogen is so important to the plants everything we are going to see in that particular video but yes nitrogen is something which the plant needs and it cannot take through the atmosphere so it needs it through soil and for that purpose bacteria or the microorganisms helps now let's talk about making of curd and bread 
curd contains several microorganisms your curd contains so many microorganisms to be sure okay and all these microorganisms are good for your health they help you in digestion so the bacteria here bacterium lactobacillus the name of the bacteria lactobacillus multiplies in milk and converts it into curd so when this bacteria start multiplying in the milk they start to cuddle the milk and turn it into curds bacteria are also involved in making of cheese pickles and many other food items so if you can recall while making pickles and cheese we leave it over time after preparing we leave it aside for you know as old as as it is more older it gets much better that is the concept so you leave the pickles and all in the hot sun just to avoid the you know spoiling or rotting other than that you leave it aside unless you leave it aside for few days you are not going to touch it you are not going to have it that is because you are allowing the fermentation and that happens only in the presence of microorganisms okay so microorganisms will help you get these particular food items bacteria along with yeast is used for fermentation of idli and dosa batter so to make our dosa and idli spongy your your mom specifically she'll be keeping the idli or the dosa batter overnight and then in the morning she is going to prepare it right so as soon as you get the batter you are not going to prepare it if you do that your dosa or your idli is not going to be spongy it it can never be spongy because the fermentation process has not occurred the fermentation to occur you need to leave it overnight in the at room temperature so that is a very important process to leave it overnight if you don't leave it overnight you are not going to get it so you leaving it overnight is to allow the microorganism the bacteria and the yeast to ferment it to feed on that particular <coughs> carbohydrates which are present inside in the absence of oxygen and release carbon dioxide so those carbon dioxide are the reason why your dosa and idli becomes spongy so yeast here they will reproduce rapidly and produce carbon dioxide during respiration so when they are inside the batter they will start reproducing fast and they'll also be producing more and more of carbon dioxide and that is the reason why your batter will become double in the morning bubbles of the gas fill the dough and increase its volume so because of the presence of the gas bubbles your volume of the batter is increasing and you might have observed most of the time the batter will you know it will rise so much that it will start to ooze out of the vessel hence yeast is used for making breads pastries and cakes whatever sponginess you need for those purposes we mainly use yeast but not always most of the time now let's talk about the commercial uses of microorganism so here commercial for economy or for selling purpose for buying purpose if you are doing it on the large scale we call it as for commercial purpose so another is production of alcohol wine and acetic acid so alcohol and wine all are almost the same wine is done with a grape juice a particular kind of grapes they use alcohol could be prepared using even it could be prepared using anything it could be uh, prepared using rotting rice rice bran anything okay and then acetic acid vinegar vinegar is also prepared using microorganism so for this purposes yeast is mainly used okay to let it decay to let it ferment so yeast is grown naturally on sugar present in grains like barley wheat rice crushed fruit juices etc so all these things are used to let the yeast grow we grow yeast naturally okay and we collect those yeast and that yeast we are using for preparation of this or they can just collect grapes or whatever they are using for preparing those alcohol wines and vinegar and they are going to close it and keep it naturally the yeast will start to grow now 
द प्रोसेस ऑफ कन्वर्शन ऑफ शुगर इन टू अल्कोहल इज नोन एज फर्मेंटेशन सो सो फार आई हैव बिन टॉकिंग अबाउट फर्मेंटेशन फर्मेंटेशन एंड यू माइट हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड वॉट फर्मेंटेशन इज सो वेन एवर शुगर इज कन्वर्ड इन टू अल्कोहल ओके वी कॉल दिस प्रोसेस ऑफ कन्वर्शन ऑफ शुगर इन टू अल्कोहल एज फर्मेंटेशन बेसिकली माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस प्रोसेस so louis pasteur was the person who discovered fermentation in 1857 louis pasteur is a scientist who actually found out how fermentation is happening or what is fermentation because of what is the process of fermentation so it was explained by louis pasteur now let's talk about medicinal use of microorganisms microorganisms are not only going to give you good good food but also medicines so medicines that kill or stop the growth of disease causing microorganisms are called antibiotics antibiotics is something you might have heard before antibiotic anti means opposite to biotics biotic are those tiny little microorganisms so this antibiotics are nothing but the medicines which kill these micro organisms so which particular micro organisms are we talking about the disease causing micro organisms okay so we are killing the micro organisms which are causing disease to us or which are harming us so antibiotics sorry antibiotics are being produced from bacteria and fungi to produce antibiotics we are using bacteria and fungi streptomycin tetracycline and erythromycin are common antibiotics and next time when you fall ill do check what doctor has prescribed you check the ingredients most of the time you will have cefexime streptomycin erythromycin so all these are nothing but common antibiotics which are given to us okay so that will help you to understand those antibiotics from whom they are coming they are also called they are produced through this microorganisms antibiotics are mixed with feed of livestock and poultry to check microbial infection in animals so this antibiotics are not only administered to human beings they are also administered to livestock and poultry livestock means cattle that is it could be goat sheep buffalo cow okay and poultry poultry here refers to hen cock okay so we are talking about the birds which we eat so in order to keep them safe or in order to not allow the diseases to attack them what they do is they mix antibiotics with their feed whatever they eating they mix antibiotics in them so that the animals take in the food along with the antibiotics and they stay healthier they are also used to control many plant diseases to control plant diseases also we are using antibiotics there are so many diseases which plants also get affected with it could be bacterial it could be fungal it could be viral as well okay so there are some of the diseases which could be cured using antibiotics lastly coming to vaccine now let's talk about vaccine so when a disease causing microbes enter our body the body produce antibodies so imagine a disease causing microorganism it could be a bacteria fungi or a virus it has attacked you it has entered inside your body now your body your blood is going to feel it right so once it enters your body your body is going to identify the enemy the somebody has entered from outside your body is going to identify that once it identifies the threat okay it's going to fight it to fight it you need soldiers right so these soldiers are nothing but antibodies your bodies are going to produce antibodies to fight this microorganisms so they are this antibodies are going to fight the microorganisms and they are going to kill it so that is how you are going to be safe you are going to be fit and fine if i have to tell you if i have to explain you imagine if your body is not able to produce antibodies in that case every now and then you are sick 
every now and then you are going to fall with something you are going to come down with something it could be a fever it could be a cough it could be a flu your body does not know how to defend yourself so once a while if you fall ill it's not a big deal because your body is saving you every now and then now how does vaccine work vaccine is going to use this mechanism of your body to help you fight the disease imagine a vaccine for polio okay if when a person is injected when little babies are injected with vaccine for polio here the vaccine contains a microorganism which either looks similar to the polio virus or it contains the dead polio virus okay so once they inject our body this fake virus or this dead virus our body doesn't know whether it's fake or whether it's dead so our body will treat it as an enemy and start producing antibodies so once the antibodies are ready inside our body and that is the reason why we'll get fever we'll feel sick for some time okay and then after some time the fever will it will start to recede and we'll feel better okay so the vac the purpose of vaccine is just to help your body produce antibodies okay just triggering our system to produce antibodies and be ready in case if the virus attacks it our body will not have enough time to avoid the damage right so once if the antibodies are ready if the virus attacks us the antibodies are directly going to kill the microorganism so it is making our body itself to fight it it are it is the vaccine's purpose is to keep the soldiers ready inside our body okay and that is how we are going to be safe we are not going to be get killed or get harmed by those viruses now these antibodies they provide protection from the disease lifelong yes once this vaccine is taken okay the antibodies which are produced inside your body it's going to stay like that inside your body lifelong so that means you need not worry for the particular disease to, to attack you cholera tuberculosis smallpox hepatitis b can be prevented by vaccination there are so many diseases which can be prevented by vaccination here are just a few okay so this is the reason why nowadays you are not going to hear about this disease because most of the most of the people they are vaccinated and they are not suffering from it they are fighting against it now let's talk about the next topic increasing soil fertility so there are lots of bacteria okay which help in increasing soil fertility one among them is increasing or they are fixing nitrogen in the soil as i said before we are going to talk about this in very very deep detail okay in the part 3 of this particular chapter okay so there are some bacteria which take nitrogen from the atmosphere okay the gaseous nitrogen and they convert it into salts of nitrogen and they mix it with the soil they get mixed this nitrogen salt get mixed with the soil now plants require nitrogen but they cannot take gaseous nitrogen they need nitrogen in the mineral form okay and bacteria is the only one which is helping the plants to get that mineral formed nitrogen so this microbes which help in this activity they are called as biological nitrogen fixers they are fixing nitrogen in the soil so they are known as biological nitrogen fixers now let's talk about cleaning the environment as i said before the microorganisms help you to clean the environment so what do they do how do they clean we have never seen this microbes sweeping the ground microbes help in converting plant and animal waste into manure so whatever plant and animal waste we have dead leaves okay falling leaves animals dying okay so whatever it could be all this are not in the same state throughout right as time goes by you are going to see them you know they are diminishing in their size they are changing their shape okay so you can see them disintegrating in the soil so this is because of our microorganisms they convert this animal and plant waste or animal and plants as well the dead ones they are converting it into manure the manures are rich in 
The manures are rich in organic matter and nutrients which is used by the plants again. This manure when they get mixed with the soil, it makes the soil fertile and the plants are able to take the nutrients from the soil. So this is again a very good thing because one way it is cleaning the environment and after cleaning whatever it's getting out of it, it is used by the plants to make, to make good yield out of it. Microorganisms decompose the unwanted matter and clean the environment. So basically what microorganisms are doing is they are cleaning the environment by decomposing the unwanted matter. Okay. And they are providing fertility to the soil as well as good nutrients and orga organic matter to the plants. Okay. So that was about cleaning the environment and also the very last part about friendly microorganisms. So in case of doubts, just leave a comment at the bottom. And as usual, I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching.